Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. This video is about how to make a histogram by hand. And uh, if you are in one of my classes, then uh, we're going to use a data set um, as an example for this video. We're going to use a data set that's directly out of your work. So that'll be nice for you guys. If you're not in one of my classes, welcome, please. I'm glad that you're watching. And um, uh, this will still be quite useful to you, I hope, in showing you how to take a data set and make a histogram of that data set. Okay, so uh, the set that we are using has 50 different numbers in it, 50 different data points. Uh, sometimes we say n equals 50, n representing the number of data points. Those data points range from a low of 0 0.372 to a high of 0 0.590. And so with that information, uh, we have decided that we are going to let our histogram start at a, low, a number below our lowest point, which we'll say 0.35, and each bar of the histogram will go up by 0 0.05. So that's the width right there, 0 0.05, of our uh, data classes or the intervals of the, of the histogram. Okay, let's take a look at the data. There's the data set right there taken directly out of your materials, uh, for if you're in one of my classes there. And again, uh, we're using a width of 0 0.05 and we're starting at 0 0.350. So just considering those two numbers right there, that's going to tell us that in our first data class, there are only three numbers, just those first three. Uh, 0 0.40 would actually be in the next data interval. All right, the next uh, class of data right there. So that class goes all the way up to 0.442 um, because then the next class would start at 0.45. Uh, so the lowest value then in our next set is that 0.453. All right, and that goes all the way up for the next two rows, goes up to 0.499. The next data point after that is 0 0.510. And so that goes into the fourth data class. That goes all the way up to 0.536. And then 0.552 begins the next data class. And there are four data points in that. So you can see in our first data set, we have, sorry, on our first interval, we have three data points. In our next interval, we have 15 data points. And you can count them up. There's 18 in the third one. <clears throat> there's 10 in the fourth one. And there's four in the fifth data class. Okay, so now we are ready to uh, set up our histogram. I'm going to use a piece of graph paper, uh, my horizontal axis. I've decided to let uh, three boxes of the graph paper represent the width of one interval or one data class. And so I'll mark off the axis there. And our lowest number, once again, is 0 .350. And so going up by intervals of, or increments of 0 0.05 means the next one starts at 0 0.4, the next one is at 0.45, and so on. And so there is our axis labeled off. We should always include uh, the label of the axis. Don't ever make a graph with axes unlabeled. It's kind of rude to do that. Uh, someone reading your interval won't know what you're trying to say. Or, I'm sorry, reading your graph, they won't know what you're trying to say. So always label your axes and be sure to include the units of the measurements. Uh, our vertical axis will basically count the frequency of each uh, point in a class. So the biggest class went up to 18. So that's our top of our, our graph there. And that should also just be labeled, I think, uh, with the word frequency is good enough. Okay, so uh, let's set up the boxes there. The first one was had three data points in it. So that's our first interval there. The next one had 15. Uh, the next one had 18. And I'm just drawing boxes here that represent how many data points are in each class. So it's really pretty easy. Uh, the fourth class had 10 data points in it, and the last class had four data points. And that's our histogram. We're pretty much done making the histogram at this point. Um, my students were also asked to consider whether or not this data distribution could be approximated by a smooth normal curve. And you can kind of argue it either way. Yes, you could say that there is some asymmetry there between the second and the fourth class. Uh, the second class goes up to 15, and the fourth one only goes down to, or only goes up to 10. So they're not the same. But on the other hand, I believe that you could make a reasonable argument that since most all of the data is grouped around the mean, which is probably somewhere a little bit less than 0.5, 
right there, that since all the data roughly uh, is grouped around that mean, that a smooth normal curve, something kind of like this, would be a reasonable approximation for this, for this data distribution. Okay, I think that's a reasonable argument to make. And so I hope this was a helpful video to you. Um, once again, if you're not in my class, I'm so glad that you took the time to watch it. If you're in my class, I'm also very glad that you took the time to watch this, and it should help you directly with your work for our class. Okay, everybody, uh, be well, and go do some more math now. Thanks. Bye-bye.